good. So everyone um, checking out the front page here, you're dealing with frequency tables. And remember yesterday when we did our, our overview of it, a frequency table is just where you're tallying up things. So in this first one, the sluggers of a baseball team uses baseball bats in five different links. Complete the frequency table and make a histogram uh, to show the links of all the bats used by the team. Answer the three questions. So here's where we're, we're making our histogram. Here's where we're making our table. Here are the links of the bats. Remember, we're just making tallies, right? So you're going through and you're tallying up the links of the bats. I think usually this is pretty, this is pretty good here. Most students do fine. Um, remember, when you find the mean, the median, and the mode, it's just helpful. You, for the median, you have to put the things in order from least to greatest, or greatest to least. So you might as well do that first. Maybe list all your links out once you have it, from least to greatest. And it helps to find those three then. Where I think students struggle is down on the, ne the next part here. And it's not because they don't understand how to make the frequency table or the tally. It's some of you have no idea how to read baseball stats. Okay, so let's re read through this real quick. In 1988, Mark McGuire set the major league record by hitting 70 home runs. Complete the frequency table and make a histogram to show the distance of all 70 home runs he hit. Now, when you're reading through this, if you read up here, it says date and distance of McGuire's 1998 home runs. So this, this stat right here says 3-31, 364. This is your date. This is your distance. Do we care about the date? No, we're not making a frequency table of the date. We're only making the frequency table of the distance. So really, we kind of ignore this part, and we use the distance over here. And so 364 would be tallied up right in there. Okay, and I, if I were you, I'd maybe cross them out as you go. Yeah? So can you just like cross off the entire column? For dates? Sure, if you don't want to see the dates, if that's going to confuse you, go for it. Okay? 368, we'll go in here. Now, here's, here's where it gets kind of complex. This is tons of data. All right? And then they, as, as you go through here, you're finding the, the, um, the um, or you're tallying it up. If you don't keep track of what you've tallied by crossing it out, you're going to get lost. Okay, so make sure you keep track there. All right, otherwise you're going to create a lot of work for yourself. Okay, so you make your frequency table and then you graph those bars on your, or yeah, your, your tally marks and then you graph those bars on your frequency or on your histogram from your frequency table. If I could say that any more muddy. All right, questions? Okay, Brina? Um, for the top one. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have different patterns. You just make bars. The bars should be the same width so that the table's not misleading or the graph isn't misleading. But okay. Want everyone to turn it over? Pause where you're at. I know you're some of you're deep into work, but turn it over. The other side's a little more confusing, I think, because box and whiskers just are things that you're not used to using. They're not terribly difficult, but you're not used to using them necessarily. Okay? So number one, for the box and whisker plot at the right. Give the following, the first quartile, second, third, and range. I want everyone to do that right now. Just see where you're at. Okay, so the first quartile, volunteer. Kelly? 25. 25, right here. All right, first quartile, we've got 25. Second quartile, Brina? Yeah. 36. 36, yeah. That's our median. The middle is our median. Third quartile, yeah, down. 44, good. And the range, Anya? Good, 8 to 60. And we're looking for a numerical value here, so it would be 60 minus 8, or in this case, 52. Okay, so a quick review of how to find those things. Okay, this is your first quartile, second quartile, which is also our median, third quartile, and extremes help us find our range. Now, we haven't actually talked about how to find these points other than the median and the extremes. We haven't talked about how to find this or this yet, the first or third quartile. 
So that other packet you picked up on the way in, that's just a note packet for you. It talks about, it talks about um, box and whisker plots, talks about a few of the other ways of organizing data. Uh, it's notes for you. Okay, so if you're struggling, it's something to read through. Um, and maybe before your quiz, kind of read through it as well. Those are your notes. Okay, so you can check that out. I want to work through problem two with you. And then on three, you're going to be doing three and four on your own. So looking at problem two, arrange these scores in order from smallest to largest. Draw a box and whisker plot of the data under the number line to the right. So the first thing you need to do is find the mean. Okay, so we need to put these pieces of data in order from least to greatest. So we're doing that. You may want to have a separate sheet of, sheet of paper out to do some of this. That way you're not cluttering up this one. But if I'm doing this, the smallest piece of data is 63. Okay. After 63, we've got, it's like 69. And after 69, 73. Okay, and then 77, and 78, and then we have here 82 twice. Oops, 84, 86. At the end, always checking out, we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14. Just double check and make sure you have all the data pieces. So we've got them all right there. All right? So if we're finding the median, Peter, what'd you get? 85. How'd you get it? So you have to go seven both ways, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's right here. So it's in between those two, right? Yeah, I just put one in. Okay. So 83? Okay. Hey, what that tells us, that tells us on our box and whisker plot, this is our median. So like if I do kind of a mock box and whisker plot right here, this is my middle line. It would be... If you're looking at this one, it would be this line right here. I'm going to now find these two lines. The lines, so that you're two, you're, you have three vertical lines. Those three vertical lines are all medians. Okay. How many know how to construct a box and whisker? Okay. Pay close attention and take notes. These three lines are all medians. This is your original median. This is the median of your lower quartile. Okay, the, or not your lower quartile, the lower half of your data. So once I find the first median, what I do is I take this set of data that's left on this side, and I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven pieces. The middle number is 77. That is 77 is my lower quartile, my first quartile. Okay, so that's my next line. That would be like that line. And so what would it be? What would be my third quartile? Yeah, I think ninety-two. Yep. Okay, so we take this set of data. All right. Then we have our extremes. Our upper extreme is ninety-eight. That's our last dot. Our lower extreme is 63, and then we connect our box. There's the box, our inner, inner quartile range there, and there are the whiskers. Yeah? Why do you have 75 and then you, and then you have whiskers at 77? 
Why do I have... Oh, this should have been 77. Thank you. That should have been 77. This one shouldn't have been 92. The range goes from 63 to 98. So 98 minus 63 give us our range. All right. Okay. How many think you got it? Yeah, you should do it right here. Now, some people actually do it like right on the number line. Some students like to do it right underneath it. I'm fine either way. Okay. Um, when you take a look at number three, though, if you look at three, it says arrange each set of heights in order from smallest to greatest. Draw how many box and whisker plots? Two. So you're probably going to draw them underneath the number line, right? Because there are going to be two of them, one for guys and one for girls. Okay? All right. There you go. That's what you're working on today. Any questions? All right. I'm sure there will be um, some good jokes on the bottom to give you a chuckle. Make sure you chuckle.